I made some news uh, over the weekend because I was doing an NBA countdown on ABC and ESPN, and one of the things that I said after watching the Los Angeles Clippers lose to the Dallas Mavericks Friday night, um, I said that uh, Russell Westbrook was awful in terms of the way he acted. Um, he nearly clotheslined one player flying in for a layup. Um, he knocked Luka Doncic to the ground on a couple of occasions. One time when Luka Doncic was driving by him, he grabbed him and, and yanked at him. Who knows? He could have separated his shoulder. And Luka Doncic got in the face like, what you doing? He pushed Luka Doncic off. Then when he did that, he got pushed in the back by P.J. Washington. And then he turns around and the charge after P.J. Washington and pushes him in the chest. He's shrugging off officials. You can't act like that. Now, I've been one who has been complimentary about Russell Westbrook since he arrived with the Clippers. It was an awful experience with the Los Angeles Lakers. There's no doubt about that, but he was not awful with the Houston Rockets. He was not awful with the Oklahoma City Thunder. He was awful with the Los Angeles Lakers, but he has been the energizer bunny in everything that the Clippers need. No doubt about it. But Friday's game three, what's the belligerence all about? Where are you coming from? Other than the fact that Luka and Dallas was whipping their ass. Now, when Russell Westbrook clothesline, not clothesline because he did go for the ball, but he did knock the guy upside the head and acting like he didn't touch the guy. That's really ridiculous. You hit his head, not the ball. But the point is, one could argue that wasn't intentional. But then when you want to be demonstrative about it, deny it, and then flex with everybody else, usually you're getting teed up for that. In some cases, that would have been a flagrant two, if not a flagrant one. It definitely was a flagrant two when you did that to Luca. It should have been. And when you're sitting up there and you're acting like that, to me, ladies and gentlemen, it wasn't enough for him to get ejected. He should have been suspended for the next game. I still stand by that. But once again, people take my words and they do what they want with it. I sat up there and said he deserved to be suspended. I still stand by that. I said I even called the league office to inquire about, well, 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 why didn't you suspend him? I didn't call the league office to sit up there and say, suspend him now, get him suspended. No, once the decision came that he wasn't suspended, I'm like, wait a minute. You've been preaching about these rules and regulations, and if you did X, Y, and Z, you're going to get suspended. Could you explain to me why you didn't suspend him? I don't want the thinking behind that. You can call the league office and ask for yourself. So you have folks like Gilly from Wallow and Gilly's podcast, great podcast, by the way, you know, speaking about it. He's sitting up there, why are you calling the league office? Yo, dude, that's my job. You talk about it. I cover it. Whether it's the commissioner, it's the executive VP, it's the disciplinary czar, it's PR or whatever. People who cover the league speak to the NBA office every week about decisions they make. And I happen to have the kind of access that allowed me to pick up the phone and call and say, why did this not, why, would, why was this not a suspension? I don't have a problem with it being, even though I would have suspended him, I don't have a problem with him not being suspended because I want all hands on deck. If you're playing in the postseason, yeah, oh yeah, I don't want any excuses. But if you're going to say that you're going to suspend somebody and then you didn't over such transgressions, not only do I have a right to inquire, I have an obligation because I cover the NBA. So I'm reading reports and we got a uh, 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 Yahoo Sports. You know, they come out with some headline, you know, with me snitching. We juveniles now? That's what we that's what we do. We in the streets. We not talking basketball. I cover the NBA. And by the way, what do you mean snitching? Snitching implies that you're trying to reveal to some to folks what nobody else saw. You were playing on national television. We all saw it. What do you mean snitching? 
What are you talking about? I could go off. But it's not necessary. You know, and I'm not talking about Gilly. I got love for him. He's a good brother. You know, do your thing, man. But you damn right I called to inquire. And I'll do it again and again and again if something else props up. By the way, I didn't bring it up, but I inquired about him B too. When he yanked at Mitchell Robinson's leg. Why was that not an ejection? While I had him on the phone. This is how you know. Y'all, a lot of people out there, I'm not talking about, I'm not, my contemporaries, obviously I'm not talking about us, who've been in the business as reporters for years. I've been a reporter for 30 years. As covering the NBA. You think I just watch the game and talk? You think stuff just comes out of my mouth and I'm not watching and I'm not having sources feed me information? No, nah, that's y'all who do podcast. I'm a reporter. I've been a reporter. Yes, I'm a personality. Yes, I'm a commentator. Yes, I'm a pundit. But I cover the league. Just like when I was on a podcast, uh, the Drink Champs, a few weeks ago. I said, y'all had conversations. Y'all were having conversations about Alex Rodriguez and the Minnesota Timberwolves ownership story. I was having a contract read to me on the phone. You talk about the league. I cover it. There's a difference. And with that comes an obligation to validate, to verify, and to comprehend Exactly what went behind the decisions that were made. So when everybody's going off, going off, going off. No, do that with yourselves. Do that with your brethren who do what you do. Because even as I sit here doing some of what you do, there's a, an inherently different obligation that comes from me and comes attached with me because I cover the league. I don't just talk about it. That's how it goes. That's how it is. And that's how the hell it's going to stay. Yes, as a pundit and a commentator, I'm telling you, Russell Westbrook's ass should have been suspended because his behavior was uncalled for. What if he had separated Luca's shoulder? That is true. But that's not why I called the league office. Suspend him, suspend him. You got to suspend him. No. I called. What was your reasoning, rationale behind a decision to not suspend them? And at that time, I was informed the officials gave the reports. And when they wrote the reports, they said that the situation was handled. He had, he had come to him. He got came, what came to him is exactly what should have come to him. He was teed up twice. He was also given flagrant two. He was ejected from the game. We had this matter under control and there was no further incident. So since that was the case, that's why we didn't suspend him. Perfect explanation. Thank you. That's what I needed to understand. Because I cover the league. Not just watch. There's a difference. Pay attention, people. Pay attention.